Hi guys, this is Vidur and I'm a senior systems engineer in Juniper Networks for Mist Wireless and in today's video we'll understand Wired Assurance 1.0 Okay, so this is the Mist dashboard and uh, we have a live demo site and the data is present for the last seven days as you can see on the screen uh, Okay, so Mist has transformed the way we look in look at the wireless networks because of the SLEs which are present on the screen right now for you and mist was acquired by juniper last year april so i think it was after six to seven months when they were able to launch wired assurance 1.0 in which they brought in the concept of the wired sles and a few more things which we will talk about in this particular video uh, the the bigger aim was to bring in the bring, bring in the, uh, the the you know the world of ai into the juniper uh, juniper switching portfolio as well and now uh, the juniper ex switches have been mystified uh, uh, all of them are AI capable and uh, then then after after a few more months they launched Wired Assurance 2.0 which we will cover in a separate video altogether but in this video we are going to talk about Wired Assurance 1.0 and what all things were raised and, and actually launched in the in the initial phase of the acquisition okay perfect so just like the just like you have the concept of SLEs in the in the wireless world we have the concept of SLEs now in the wired world as well. So let me click on uh, the wired tab here on the screen on the top and we reach this particular page. Similar to that, we have three SLEs, uh, similar to the wireless, we have three SLEs in the wired world as well. We have throughput, we have successful connects, we have switch health, which is very important. Throughput is of course, we understand what throughput is, uh, talks about the throughput through the network on the wired side, which takes into consideration the congestion uplink, congestion, storm control if there's any on the network network problems if there's, there's enough pipe or not in the network and interface anomalies and i think mist is also working on bringing in uh, uh, you know bringing in the concept of stp loops how we can how we'll be able to actually detect and prevent stp loops in the network i think that's that's work in progress i i uh, but but should we should be out soon the next thing is you know we, we talk about successful connects on the wired side as well we we understand it could be because of dscp or authentication we take into consideration that as well and of course in the settings tab you you are always there to you know uh, set the value that you want to set and and, and define your own goal here uh, switch health uh, is 73 percent success here and it takes into account whether the switch was unreachable at any time whether the temperature of the switch was a problem power level uh, of the switch you know cpu utilization is high and or, or the memory problem i see cpu has been quite high let's let's see what's 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 going on once i click on switch health it takes me to the classifiers i can check uh, cpu has been a problem and and it it, it actually detects and tells us you know 5.3 thousand user minutes have been affected because of that one more thing that you want you might you might want to look at is the distribution here and of course the timeline tab here the distribution will tell us which all switches were affected because of that let me just zoom out so that you see it clearly and you know this is the uh, chassis or I, if i see the switch i see this particular switch has been affected the overall impact is quite a lot and the failure rate is 100 percent so this is something which you want to look at once you click on the switch you will get in the switch insights we'll, we'll talk about that in a while uh, so this is how the SLE SLEs of wired uh, wired side have also been uh, you know implemented and introduced to the to the to the MIST dashboard. That is that is that is the first thing that entered uh, in the wired assurance. The second thing that I want you to look at is uh, how to claim and how to claim a switch and how to add them into the MIST dashboard. So there are there are two ways primarily how you can view a switch in the MIST dashboard. Okay, so you see a switch tab here. I'll click on this. I'll just give you a peek of how it looks like, but I'll I'll discuss about this in the in the, in the coming coming five minutes. So uh, you see a few switches as green. Some of them one one of them is red, and and, and there might be a one uh, you know in gray as well. So I'll tell you how what what it really means uh, you know when it is gray. So I'll tell you how to add a switch in the MIST dashboard, but but there are two ways by which we can we can actually have the, the switch information into the MIST dashboard. One, if the AP is connected to the switch, the AP will require uh, LLDP to be enabled on the switch for it to receive power also. And through LLDP, it gets the information of the switch side and you are able to see uh, uh, the switch name here in the MIST dashboard, here in the switch tab. That will be in the gray, gray color, okay? That will be in the gray color. The second thing is if you onboard a switch onto the MIST dashboard completely, and that's how you do it. So I'll take you to organization and I'll go on inventory here. I see there was an access point tab here, but I'm gonna take you to switch tab here now. And I see there's an option for claim a switch or adopt a switch. 
all the new switches that are being launched in the mist in, in, in juniper now which are being shipped by by juniper now are ztp enabled zero touch provisioning which which means they will be they will come with a qr code they will come with an activation code so if you place an order for 100 switches they will come with one activation code and every switch will also have a qr code at the back side which you can scan to onboard that onto the mist dashboard claiming a switch i'll click on that i'll, I'll get the same uh, same same uh, activation code uh, column here I can add the activation code and click on add and then assign it to whichever site I want to assign it to right and I can click claim here we are good to go that way or if you already have a deployment going on in your network and you want to onboard the existing switch or like a brownfield deployment that's already there and you want to onboard a, a switch from there you can click on adopt switch here okay I'll click on adopt switch and I will be and I will be taken to this switch adoption uh, section which will come up it has a bunch of commands which you can just simply copy to clipboard and then go to the switch and paste it in the CLI and hit commit which will which will save the configuration the moment you do that you will get that switch here in the switch tab that will be in green color okay that will be in green color which means the switch is completely onboarded and now is a part of the mist dashboard you can actually monitor the switch from here you can actually do a lot of things uh, from the switch side now once i click on the switch so just to be sure we we understand that correctly in the inventory tab we we need to adopt a switch for an already existing switch in the network or if it's a new switch you can click on claim a switch and then you will get you, you need to enter the activation code and you're good to go that is how you onboard a switch onto the mist dashboard now i'll click on switches here and it'll take me to the live demo site it will give me a list view here and at, and the next thing is the topology view so it's going to also create a topology on its own once it gets information from LLDP or if you onboard it I'll click on topology that's how it shows me I see a live demo site I see multiple switches here I can click on any switch and it will you know, tell me how many APs are connected or there is no client here let me click on this switch I see uh, multiple switches here uh, multiple APs here I click on this particular switch I see a couple of more switches I'll click on that I see uh, some APs connected with a few clients also here I'll see that so these are the few clients connected so it, it, it builds a topology and it's very convenient for us to view and understand you know how the network will look like and what all clients are connected also will be very handy for us to view if you just want to you know take a look at that uh, in, at a high level now location tab is something else which is again will is it's a very good tool to be very honest i i haven't seen this anywhere else so this will tell us how the and you know what will be the blast radius if if a switch goes down so this is uh this is the wi-fi coverage and 2.4 and 5 gigahertz i'll just quickly zoom in a bit so that you know what i'm doing yeah this is better okay so if i clicked on 2.4 i see the 2.4 coverage on the floor plan how it looks like if i click on 5 gigahertz i see the 5 gigahertz coverage on the floor plan how it looks like now i can try to turn off this switch this is the button i can click to turn this off how will it impact the site on the floor how will the wi-fi coverage will look like if this switch particular switch goes down you know if i click on i if i enable that and, and disconnect this one uh, there is there isn't much impact if I en disable this enable this one and disable this one again some po some portion of the coverage just went if I turn off both which mean you know this portion is left unattended by the wireless uh, by the APs if I turn off all three everything will go of course so now this will help us understand you know have we prepared a network perfectly right for the worst case scenario yes or no if, if no then we probably need to make sure we define it in the right possible way let me just zoom out a bit so that yeah okay perfect that this is this is the importance of this particular so it's not really turning off the switch but it's virtually turn simulating the uh, you know simulating the environment and, and letting us know how it will look like once the switches uh, are turned off uh, okay so one more thing uh, which you need to check on this particular page is the uh, these five five tabs here uh, switch ap affinity poe compliance vlan version compliance or switch up time okay so what uh, the reason why this is important is uh, switch ap affinity uh, it's it's this was this was a feature which was requested by one of the existing customers of mist uh, the reason is uh, let's say they have uh, they have hundreds of thousands of switches deployed in their huge network and they wanted to make sure that I that they do not have more than 12 APs per switch okay that is important because of the PoE uh, PoE demand from the APs uh, they, they demand 802.380 which is 25.5 watt to power on and work perfectly fine 
some people may want only 10 APs on a switch. Some people want maybe 15 APs on a switch. Uh, so this this parameter, if you define the value 12 in the in the dashboard, this parameter will help you uh, check if all the switches are you know uh, abiding by this rule set or not. Uh, and if if there's any switch which is not abiding, if if any switch has more than 12 APs, then you know there'll be a there'll be an alarm here. You know there'll be a red red column here. Okay, which is which means a, a percentage failure. Now, if you have hundreds of switches in the network, you cannot walk into every closet and check, you know, if each switch has uh, 12 APs or more or not. This this feature was very handy for them, and it helps saves them a lot of time, and and you know, uh, and and gives gives good result as well. POE compliance will tell you, you know, if if all APs have been powered on perfectly well, they're if they're all receiving enough enough power or not. Uh, VLANs, if there's a missing VLAN, which we'll talk about in Marvis Action uh, in the next video, uh, missing VLAN basically will tell us, you know, if there's if there's an AP which is which on on a, on, a, on an AP port, if there is a one VLAN which should be allowed but it is not allowed, and that is done by unsupervised machine learning. We'll we'll talk more about that though. Version compliance, if all switches are on the same version or not, this will give you an idea. And switch up time, you know, it'll tell you how how much uh, how how much uh, you know switch up time is there and if if switch has rebooted or not. Now that is these are all good to know information very good to know information in, in fact now let's let's click on one switch and understand what it means so I'll, I'm just going to choose this switch because I see there are two APs uh, on this some wire clients also so it will give us a good idea I'll click on the mist uh, the green color switch or oh, before I do that let me quickly go back and before I do that uh, so I talked about any any uh, switch which is being learned through LLDP the missed AP is connected on any switch, whether it's a Cisco switch, Aruba switch, or any switch, any vendor switch. If a missed AP is connected on that, the information of the, about the switch will be learned through LLDP, and that that switch will be mentioned here or or displayed here in gray color, which means the switch is there on the the missed AP is on the switch there, but the switch is not onboarded onto the missed dashboard. Okay, that's going to be gray color. I see green. Green means the switch is onboarded onto the missed dashboard, which we just which we did through the inventory and claim AP or a claim switch or an adopt switch button there. The red one basically is adopted, but it is disconnected. If I click on that, it'll say you know it's disconnected here. That's why it is red. Okay, okay. So if let's say I have a switch now, this is this is interesting because if I have a, a, a Juniper switch on which I have a missed AP connected. The information will be learned through LLDP and also I can onboard a switch through the adopt switch or the claim switch option. Now I will see that name two times in this in this tab, in this particular page, right? Which is not good. We should we should not be seeing the switch name twice. Now what it will do is it'll it'll run its back it'll do its background check for a, for like at least I think one hour or so. And then after that it is gonna remove one entry and 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 you know keep the green one. And remove the gray one which means you know that switch is going only going to be displayed once in the missed dashboard right now another thing which has happened now if if i see i don't have a gray switch here so i cannot show you what options we see in the gray switch but i, I can click on the green one and show you what options we see on the green uh, green switch so guys you need to ignore what's there in the switch configuration tab here this was launched with uh with wired assurance 2.0 which we'll talk about in the other video uh, you know you have you have the option to configure everything on the switch side as well but i'm going to i'm not going to discuss that in this video i'm going to you know take you to uh, what we see in the wide assurance 1.0 tab here we will see the front panel which will tell us you know where is the client connected where is the ap connected or you know, if there's a wired client here and there you know what's what's really going on with that i see all these parameters for this particular switch i see the mac address all the good information okay with with the switch onboarded you see the the option of switch insights here but with the switch being learned or it's a juniper if it's a cisco switch or, or, or an aruba switch which cannot be onboarded it will be uh, learning the information through lldp and the switch insights button will not come then right i'll tell you what switch insights is but in the meantime you can see the number of missed aps connected the wireless clients on the aps total power drawn and uptime of the switch last seen and connected status as well with the ip address as well so this is all going to be there even if it's a Cisco switch or an Aruba switch, all these three information will, will definitely be there. And of course, the front panel also will be there. Now, what different things, uh, what different uh, comes with, with the switch onboarded is the switch on insights tab here. I'll click on it and it, it will directly take me to the switch, uh, to the switch itself. I'm going to make it last seven days so that we have good data. 
and now I am actually inside the switch trying to understand what the switch went through in the last seven days whether it's so all the switch events will be listed here for me to view right starting from last seven days okay I can also select which switch ports event I want to check I can do that and it will filter it out on the switch port also and 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 give me some very good information okay so uh, moving forward I see a CPU utilization for the last seven days how it looks like memory utilization gives me a good idea what the memory has been like number of bytes tra traversed uh, power level of the AP of the of the switch how, how is it how the power uh, power drawn is going on with this this particular graph you can see that and of course we are here uh, it talks about the switch ports and which which profile is it pushed to this is this profile is done through wireless 2.0 we will we'll discuss more about that as well uh, we see raspberry pi client uh, that's the power drawn and and gives us all the good information about you know which which device is connected on which particular switch and and also tells us you know the current switch properties uh, whether it's a state is connected or not what's the model number of the switch and the wireless clients and what all power drawn some good information so if you want to troubleshoot a switch this is a good place to be in this will this these these events will tell us you know if things are failing if things are going well this this will give us a very good idea okay i'm going to click quickly go back to the switch tab again and let's see if so one thing that you want to understand here guys is uh this is uh the juniper ex ex which is portfolio right now is mystified work is being done for the higher model of the switches also to be uh, the the core model of the switches also to be mystified and i think that's going to happen very soon uh juniper is right now working on integrating van assurance as well i think that they are they have, they have launched it already and we have the srx's also uh, which are which are now mystified and which are in the mist world so if i quickly you know take 10 seconds to show you what i mean uh, you see a WAN tab here. I'm not going to touch it here on this particular uh, video, in this video. But uh, the WAN tab here talks about the SRXs that are that are that also are added to the MIS dashboard now. Okay. Uh, apart from that, uh, we have Marvis integration done with the with the with the wired assurance as well. Uh, the uh, you know Marvis also can now uh, uh, check the data on the wired side and give you results. Marvis is for a separate video again. But uh, for wired assurance uh, 1.0, we had the wired wired SLEs which were brought in the picture. We understand how to uh, how to onboard a switch. Uh, we can claim a switch through the through ZTP. Just add the activation code and we are good to go. Or we can adopt a switch with the switches which are already there in the network, which are uh, up and running. We can just add these commands and the, these switches will be added to this particular instance of the MIS dashboard. Okay, then the switch will come here. From here, you can actually figure out uh, what what parameters are, are are visible, what all things can be visible on the switch, and we can check the topology view, uh, you know, which is very which is very good, and we can also check the location of each switch and how the blast status will look like if a switch goes down. So all these things are very handy, and these these were launched in, in Wired Assurance 2.0. Since then, we have Wired Assurance 2.0 also launched, and we have a lot of things uh, a lot of things to do in that. Uh, I gave you a quick overview or, or a peek at what we do in Wired Assurance 2.0. I'm keeping that for a separate video, and but but yeah, that that's very good stuff. That that's that's coming up for you guys. Uh, okay, I think that's that's all I wanted to show you here on this in this particular video. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any questions about Wired Assurance 1.0 or 2.0, feel free to drop a message, and I'll be more than happy to address the same for you. Uh, thank you guys, and you have a wonderful day.